Gina from hauntedflower.com and hauntedflowerreviews.com and today I'm going to be reviewing The Descendants Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital copy, The Killing, the complete first season, and Wizards on Blu-ray. Let's just get this out of the way because it's weird. This is the 35th anniversary edition of this Ralph Bakshi film. This is, these are the same animators who did the Lord of the Rings cartoon, not the Hobbit cartoon, which was kind of awesome. This is freaking weird. I don't even know the target audience for this because it certainly can't be kids. It is this weird, like, post-apocalyptic world where, you know, nuclear war and radiation has created, like, mutants and dwarves and elves but not cool ones, and there are lots of strange weapons and creatures, fairy girl with hardened nipples, and it just doesn't make any sense. And I hated it so much, obviously. It came out in 1977. It's 81 minutes long. And the reason I took the chance with it is because of the animator. Anything to do with Lord of the Rings, I thought, why not try it? And it also has the voices of Mark Hamill, Susan Tyrell, and Richard Romanus. I couldn't figure out which one was Mark Hamill. I'm assuming it must be young Mark Hamill voice. Probably some sort of weird elf dwarf character. But this is just weird, and I don't think you need to watch it if you didn't like it the first time around, because you probably won't like it now if this is the first time you're seeing it. However, if you were a fan, it comes with a... 24 page collectible book. Oh, see, so yeah, there's the fairy chick. Also has commentary from the director. It has uh, a whole feature on his wizardry of animation, a still gallery, a TV spot, and theatrical trailers. Steer clear. The one you probably should check out this week would be The Descendants because it's a very good film. It was one of my favorite films of last year, stars George Clooney, and um, it's just I've already reviewed this, so you can go watch the full review, but basically, it's about a guy dealing with a lot of stuff in his life right now. His wife's in a coma, he doesn't know how to raise his daughters without her, and he is the final say on this big Hawaiian land deal that's been in his family for generations, and so he's dealing with all his family members. A lot of stress for one guy, and then to put the cherry on top, he finds out his wife was cheating on him, and he kind of decides he needs to go find the guy to have some closure. It's an excellent film. You definitely should check it out for all the reasons I've said in a previous review. But for your features, you get a whole feature where everyone talks about how much they love George Clooney. That seems obligatory. Uh, working with Alexander, the director. The Real Descendants. This is a feature that talks about the real Hawaiian descendants and the story of the land, and that's actually really interesting historically. Hawaiian style. Yes. The Hawaiians have style, and you can learn about it. Also, casting, working with water, because filming underwater has never been done before. No, really, it, it's it's fine. Um, there are three music videos. That seems heavy. Waiting for the Light, The World Parade from Hawaii, a silent film, and a conversation with George Clooney and Alexander Payne, and deleted scenes. So basically... Anything and everything you could ever want to see about Hawaii or this movie or the book, bam, there it is. You mentioned it was nominated for five Academy Awards. Lastly, we have The Killing, the complete first season. Who killed Rosie Larson? Well, I was pretty disappointed with this, to be honest, because I heard it was this really gripping series and that everyone was really pissed about the ending because, spoiler alert, they don't find her killer! Oh no! It has to go another season? Well, if it didn't, that that would be the only season the show would ever have. You can't be that surprised. What annoys me about this is that I really like mysteries, I like finding clues and stuff, but it feels like the longest episode of Law and Order ever. And it fixates so much on these stories of the characters when I care more about the case. Ah! So it stars this girl, Muriel Enos, as the detective. Oh my god, the whole series, she's supposed to be leaving Seattle to go start her new life with her fiancé and her son, and she stays around because of the case, 
and her family gets more and more irritated with her, and she kind of doesn't raise her son, so her son gets into trouble, and her fiancé gets mad at her. Shocking! It's because every episode she says, I'm gonna go get on a plane, and then fails to get on a plane. She has a partner here, played by Joel Kinnaman, and I really can't get into his character at all. He's kind of not a good person, in my opinion. He is always pretending to be a drug addict. You find out that he was a drug addict. He's got all sorts of personal business. I don't care about his personal business either. I mean, I think the only characters whose personal business I care about would be the victim's family because they're the victim's family. They're the characters that should have emotional stuff to deal with. Why are we dealing with everybody else? I don't know, because it's getting in the way of the investigation and it's making me mad. And then finally, you have the character of the guy who's running for mayor and, you know, the chick he's sleeping with that's helping with his campaign and his other partner and, oh no, who's playing dirty on the campaign trail? Oh no, Rosie Larson's murder is going to make me look bad. The, the, the politics crap. It's not nearly as interesting as it should be. The, you know what's really awesome about watching the show? Seattle. I love watching the scenery, the constant rain, the pine trees, the atmosphere, Pike's Place. And then all those pesky characters get in the way. And they don't even bother to do well in their investigation. It's such crap. So this is three discs, 13 episodes, has some special features that I didn't bother to watch because I was too pissed off. There is an extended season finale. Go have fun with that. It probably still won't have her killer in it. Commentary on the pilot with the executive producer, writer, Vina Sud. An autopsy of the killing. Really? That's a clever name for a feature. Deleted scenes, gag reel, and a commentary on the season finale with the main actress and the writer, Nicole Yorkin. Ugh, I'm so mad that I wasted so many hours on this. I made it about 11 episodes and then said I have to stop because my time is too valuable to waste on this. They're not getting anywhere and you're not raising your kid and you're just getting into all sorts of stupid crap and it... Mm. So uh, the verdict this week is you should go watch The Descendants and good luck if you want to continue with The Killing. Have fun next season because I won't be joining you. See you next time. Bye. If you like this review, go to my site at hauntedflowerreviews.com. I also have a podcast on iTunes. Please leave me ratings and comments. Also, we have a store, hauntedflower.com, where you can find the best online apparel and accessories from movies, TV shows, anime, and more. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hauntedflower, and that's where we have all of our contests, too, so you can win free stuff. Go to IndieMojo.com if you live in Indianapolis and you can find out how to go to free movies.